Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. And I pray that our time together in God's word today is a blessing to you as you grow in your faith and in your knowledge of Jesus Christ as your Savior. We begin today with a reading from Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing to our God, for praise is pleasant and lovely. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers Israel's exiled people. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He gives names to all of them. Our Lord is great, vast in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord helps the oppressed, but brings the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Play the lyre to our God, who covers the sky with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, and causes grass to grow on the hills. He provides the animals with their food and the young ravens what they cry for. He is not impressed by the strength of a horse. He does not value the power of a warrior. The Lord values those who fear him, those who put their hope in his faithful love. We continue reading the Proverbs of Solomon today in our Old Testament reading from Proverbs chapter 16. The reflections of the heart belong to mankind, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All a person's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs motives. Commit your activities to the Lord and your plans will be established. The Lord has prepared everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Everyone with a proud heart is detestable to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. Iniquity is atoned for by loyalty and faithfulness, and one turns from evil by the fear of the Lord. When a person's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. A person's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his steps. God's verdict is on the lips of a king. His mouth should not give an unfair judgment. Honest balances and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his concern. Wicked behavior is detestable to kings, since the throne is established through righteousness. Righteous lips are a king's delight, and he loves one who speaks honestly. The king's fury is a messenger of death, but a wise person appeases it. When a king's face lights up, there is life. His favor is like a cloud with spring rain. Get wisdom. How much better it is than gold. And get understanding. It is preferable to, Caesar, to silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. The one who guards his way protects his life. Pride comes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly of spirit with the humble than to divide plunder with the proud. The one who understands a matter finds success, and the one who trusts in the Lord will be happy. Anyone with a wise heart is called discerning, and pleasant speech increases learning. Insight is a fountain of life for its possessor, but the discipline of fools is folly. The, wise of a, the heart of a wise person instructs his mouth. It adds learning to his speech. Pleasant words are a honeycomb sweet to the taste, and health to the body. In our New Testament reading, we continue on in the book of John. Jesus and his disciples are still on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, and John records more of Jesus' discussions with them um, uh, while they are talking on the way. Jesus said, I have told you these things to keep you from stumbling. They will ban you from the synagogues. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering service to God. They will do these things because they haven't known the Father or me. But I have told you these things so that when their time comes, you will remember I told them to you. I didn't tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going away to him who sent me. And not one of you asks me, where are you going? Yet because I have spoken these things to you, 
sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. And about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Again, in a little while, you will see me. What is the significance of the fact that Jesus needed to withdraw his visible presence from us for a while? In our writing for today, Martin Luther comments on that and also speaks about the tremendous comfort that we have knowing that our Savior has ascended and is now ruling all things for our good. Now, Christ did not go to the Father for his own sake or for his own person. For this would not have helped us and could not be called our righteousness. But just as he came down from heaven for our sakes and became our flesh and blood, so he also ascended into heaven for our sakes, after conquering sin, death, and hell, and entering into his dominion, by which he redeems us from all this and gives us forgiveness of sins, power, and victory over death and the devil. Faith must lay hold of this, must be founded on it, and must take comfort from it in times of temptation. When the devil and man's own conscience argue with him as follows, listen, what kind of Christian are you? Where is your righteousness? Do you not see and feel that you are a sinner? How then will you pass muster before God? Here again, he must base his words on this verse and say, I know very well, and I am sorry to say, that I am a sinner, and that in me there is no righteousness that will be valid before God. And I must and will not look for or know such of such righteousness in myself, for with it I could never come before God. But in this verse, I hear Christ say that my righteousness consists in his going to the Father and in his ascension into heaven. There my righteousness has been deposited, and there the devil will surely have to let it remain he will not make Christ a sinner or reprove or find fault with his righteousness. If I am a sinner and my life does not pass, must pass muster before God, and if I find no righteousness in myself, I have another treasure, which is the righteousness of which I boast and on which I rely. This is Christ's going to the Father, which he has presented to me as a gift. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Come, holy light, guide divine. Now cause the word of light, life to shine. Teach us to know our God aright and call him Father with delight. From every error, keep us free. Let none but Christ our master be, that we in living faith abide. In him, our Lord, with all our might confide. Alleluia, alleluia. And we pray, O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful people to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world and our, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. I pray that the Lord richly blesses your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.